Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are diving deep into sustainable building design and we are putting a popular tool under the microscope. Today we are looking at the bioclimatic chart. You have probably seen it. It is a colorful graph that architects use to design buildings that respond to the climate. But is it as reliable as we think? A recent study says that it's time for an upgrade. Researchers at the MIT have developed a new tool called eCompass, which they argue is a better alternative to the traditional bioclimatic chart. Their study, published in Building and Environment in 2025, challenges the long-held belief in this classic design method and points out the power of building energy simulations. For decades, the bioclimatic chart has been a go-to for architects. It is based on the psychrometric chart, which maps air temperature and humidity, and it suggests passive design strategies like solar shading, natural ventilation, and thermal mass. The idea is that by plotting your local climate on this chart, you can design buildings that work with the environment, not against it. The bioclimatic chart's origin traces back to Victor Olgai in 1963. He combined comfort zones from the psychrometric chart with climatic elements to suggest design strategies. Givoni later redefined it, and then Givoni and Milne added considerations for the thermal mass and night ventilation. This was all based on a deep understanding of building physics. The bioclimatic chart was later digitalized and it is now included in a tool called Climate Consultant that many of you may have used. But here is the catch. The bioclimatic chart has some significant limitations. It relies on simplified assumptions about how buildings behave, failing to account for factors such as internal heat loads, transient conditions and ventilation. For example, the chart does not differentiate between buildings' usage types like offices and residences, which have varying heat gains. It also does not fully capture how temperature fluctuates throughout the day. And the chart assumes well-ventilated buildings, but does not properly account for how ventilation will interact with thermal mass. Building energy simulation use physics-based computer programs to model heat and mass flow in and around the buildings. Tools like eCompass use this simulation to give more accurate insights. Unlike the bioclimatic chart, eCompass considers various factors like building orientation, window to wall ratio, and a range of passive de design strategies to recommend optimal designs for thermal comfort and energy efficiency. The key difference is that building energy simulation tools like eCompass can simulate the dynamic performance of building in a way that the bioclimatic chart simply cannot. The MIT team compared the bioclimatic chart against simulation run by eCompass, and the results were actually concerning. They found that the bioclimatic chart can over or under predict the need for air conditioning in many cases. This is the reason why we decided not to include the bioclimatic chart inside the CBE Clima tool. For example, uh, when combining night ventilation, thermal mass and elevated air speed for an open window, the bioclimatic chart significantly underpredicts overheating hours because it unphysically assumes that elevated air speed from a window can be combined with thermal mass. In fact, in up to 21% of the cases, the bioclimatic chart incorrectly predicts whether a building needs an AC system, sometimes missing the need for AC altogether. E-Compass, on the other end, provides specific design recommendations by simulating a range of scenarios. It can identify the maximum allowable window to wall ratio for different wall orientations and suggest the best passive design strategies like thermal mass, shading, and night ventilation. For example, in a cool climate like Stockholm, E-Compass might suggest using thermal mass and a large window to wall ratio on the south facade for heating gains while limiting them elsewhere. In a warmer climate like Faro, Portugal, it can show that the thermal mass is essential to prevent overheating, especially at night, even with small windows, particularly on the west wall. By using building energy simulation, eCompass can give specific, actionable advice for designing climate-responsive buildings. So what does it mean for us? While the bioclimatic chart can be used for an as an educational tool, it shouldn't be relied upon for real-world design we need to move towards more accurate, simulation-based approaches, which provide reliable data to optimize building performance. It's about moving beyond simple assumptions to a place where we understand 
how buildings truly behave. What are your thoughts? Is it time to retire the bioclimatic chart and embrace building simulations? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe for more content on sustainable design, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for listening.